Jivo fans, I'm Mike Kramer. What's up guys, I'm Jay Vincent. And we're the composers for LEGO Ninjago. And uh, we've got some uh, questions here, um, and uh, we'd like to give you some answers. And yeah, um, you know, when we first uh, started reading the script, um, we decided pretty early on that we were going to use instruments um, to uh, kind of cla classify the good guys and the bad guys. So we decided that the good guys were going to be wind instruments and the bad guys were going to be stringed instruments. So. Yeah, and we stuck to that pretty strictly uh, throughout the first two seasons and even going into this new third season when, uh, when the bad guys are very different from the, the bad guys in previous seasons. So. You know, and the cool thing is that, you know, Ninjago, it's a, it's a fantasy universe, and so you get all these different groups of creatures, you get all these different cultures, and so you can assign different cultures of Earth to, um, you know, that share certain similarities, you know, sound-wise or character-wise or culture-wise to the various cultures in Ninjago. So, for instance, um, you know, you have something very proper, like an upright bass for Pythor, and then something very kind of dark and, and obscure like uh, like a Deruba from India for Lord Garmadon or a um, Zonghu from from China for, for, for the overlord. overlord. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so but but they're all but they're all string instruments. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we wanted to set up just, you know, this this very real contrast between between good and evil. And good, you know, good has has life, it has breath. So wind instruments you use breath in order to play them. And then um, you know, bad guys they you know, there's a lot of tension to it. And so string instruments, you know, yeah, they, there's a lot of tension when you draw a bow across a string. Yeah. Or even when you pluck a string, there's still some some pain and tension involved. Yeah. Um so besides just the instruments, we also wanted to um, you know, do something that was more orchestral. You know, Jay and I we both grew up listening and, and were inspired by, you know, classic orchestral scores. So we, we wanted to keep to that and so we wanted to do a blend of um, you know, traditional orchestral stuff with these ethnic colors plus you know modern film scoring stuff so electronics and we threw all those three things in a pot and stirred it up and uh, what came out was Ninjago. Yeah, um, although it's, it's, it's very organic because you know we have a great relationship with the screenwriters Kevin and Dan Hagman so um, so anything anything that they come up with you know in their creative minds you know we feel like the music is just a very honest response to that you know, we, we're not really going on the limb and saying, oh, we have this musical agenda or that right. musical right. agenda. It's yeah. just, it's more like, hey, it's inevitable. Like, what else did you want to hear? Yeah, so the story really sets the parameters for us in a way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so basically, at the beginning of the season, or even before the season starts, um, we read the scripts. We read the scripts for the entire season before uh, the first episode even comes to us. So that way, we know what the important characters are, what the important through lines and themes are that we might want to emphasize and stuff. Because when you're doing episodic television, you know, you, you meet a new character in an episode, you know, as a viewer, you don't know whether you're going to see that person again. But we do. And so if we think that character is important enough for you to remember, then we can plant these little musical seeds. Like, for instance, uh, Dareth in Season 2. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a goofy guy that you'd probably only meet once. He's like a TV guest star. However, you know, going on to the end of Season 2, Dareth becomes very instrumental in the story. And so we're like, you know what? We're going we're gonna to bust out our Tower of Power records and then hire a Barry Sax player and, and, and get funky with Dareth because he's important enough to have his own music. Right. So we sit down, you know, before each season and and try to create a musical blueprint um, and you know that that's the a, a short amount of time but it, it pays off in, in the long run it's, as far as like how much actual time it, it, it's taken us to to write um, all these episodes it's about a two-week process to compose for each episode between you know right uh, spotting the episodes and writing the themes and then um, writing all the music and recording and mixing, uh, the time goes by pretty quickly. So we end up, you know, using pretty much full two weeks. Um, so it's uh, it's it's a it's a lot of work. Yes, 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 yes. So, so it's two weeks per episode, but also at the beginning, you know, we lay down what you know. We get together, both of us together, in the same room, and we write all the main themes for the right. season, mm -hmm. that which will play out as we each split off and do our individual cues for for each episode.
Um, I would say that it's that for the second season. I don't know about you, but for the the second season, it it was a little bit easier in the sense that we knew the tone of the the, the show, we knew the characters better, so it was a little bit easier to write for them. Um, and write in the style of Ninjago because we figured out what that style was over the course of the first season. But with every new season and with every new episode, really, there's like a whole new set of musical challenges and problems that we have to figure out. So um, it's there's always something new coming at us. So it's while at the same time it's getting easier because we're more comfortable with the style. It also gets harder because you know the writers, uh, the the Hegman brothers keep coming up with these amazing bigger and bigger ideas that we have to rise to the the occasion um, with, with the music. Exactly, yeah, yeah. It, it gets easier and it gets harder at the same time because we know that the you guys' as fans are very involved in, uh, in in this musical universe and stuff. And we, there's, we feel like there's this constant feedback loop between, between the artist and, and, and the audience. And, you know, to the point where some people... Um, like Ms. Willow Byrne, you got to check her stuff out. Uh, B y r n e. She 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 puts up the, you know people are putting up these videos of them playing the Ninjago music on their own instruments and so and you know you, you read these comments on these videos and they they're, they're, there's such with you know there's such accuracy with it you know they say okay this theme was played for this character in this episode for this reason and then it was reiterated seven episodes later when this character came back into this thing and it's like you guys are sharp and so you know. We understand that, and we read those comments, and so we know, we you know we know that you hold us as artists to a certain standard, and so each episode, even if we're busy or if we're sick, we're like, hey man, these these guys want the best stuff. We you know we we got to give it to them. Um, so so th so then it's kind of like you know, continuous continually you know raising the bar of, of of what you do with your art, and also you know he mentioned the Hagmans are keep on raising the bar with what they do. Will film the animators in China, the the, the voice actors, they keep on raising the bar. So. It's like the bar gets higher and higher every time, right. um, and um, you and know. literally for 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 me, um, you know, one of the things that makes it a, a challenge for each um, new season is, you know, with each new character, we often try to introduce a new instrument, uh, and I, I end up playing um, a, a few of the the live instruments on the score, and so whenever there's a a, a new character, I'm often you know. In, in my my studio here just like trying desperately to learn this new instrument so it's always a challenge for me to uh, each each episode is, is something new yeah yeah the, the the style of music evolves as the season evolves and yeah. you got you guys are in for a major evolution with uh, with season three yeah. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> what I would give to be the overlord. <laughs> um, so you would have no voice. Yeah, it's, it's a small price to pay for for greatness. <laughs> uh, but uh, so we didn't provide any of the actual characters' voices. That being said, a lot of voices that you hear in the show, especially the score, are ours. Right. Um, so like we were the pirate music. We were the pirates. We were the, we were, we were the singing pirates. Who were, who, were, who, were, who, were, who were technically characters. Right. Actually, a very funny story to go uh, to go with the pirates. So we, Kramer. Um, wrote some brilliant pirate lyrics um, for the for the, for Captain Soto's pirates in the beginning of episode uh, 15, and uh, we heard back from from the, from the Lego people, and they said we like it, but but <laughs> but you know this is translated into so many other languages. We're going to have to hire voice actors, and it's just going to be this huge mess. And so, do you think you could just come up with just pirate gibberish? That way, we won't have to translate it. So so we had to do something strictly in pirate. And that's and that's what you heard. But so so we were the pirates. Were you know Cole uh, whistling? Yeah. You know were the, were the ancient voices of Ouroboros when Pythor is summoning the Great Devourer. And anytime you hear you know the ninjas do something heroic, there's that you know that traditional Taiko ensemble <gasps> doing chants and ha and all that kind of stuff. So that's that's us. That's actually everybody that worked on the show. The the, the editors and you know we 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 spent some time in Denmark. And uh, so we got all the animators and editors and directors and uh, like the president of the production company and all the sound guys to all do those things together. So it's like yeah. the whole family is is on, is on the soundtrack together. So we tried to uh, to you know weasel our way in, into the show as much as possible. And <laughs> we, we we abuse our, our position of power yeah. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
that, that's that, a good question. That person's definitely not an only child. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I. Yeah, I mean, it, we Jay and I we're, we work uh, really well together. We we're different and similar, and our differences uh, work well together. Um, we we sometimes come at uh, a musical problem from uh, at a different angle, and so if I'm having a difficult time with this, uh, with a particular uh, theme or a scene, you know, oftentimes Jay will will be able to pick it up and and, and come right in with the, the good idea. So we play off of each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we we work really well together. I mean, there's there's a complexity of the story that lends itself to a complexity in music, uh, and so. Having more than one point of view is, is is essential in being able to solve musical problems and solve them quickly because you know we're running right. on a very tight deadline. And yeah. so, you know, and the the bit the biggest thing is you know we both love the show and we love the story and we love the characters so much that like you know we want what's best for the show. I mean, if I if I may go on a limb here and stuff, it's kind of like you know two parents that don't always agree on everything, <laughs> but they love the kids so much that eventually you know. The, you know, the, the, so the mom's gonna be like, you know what, Dad, you're right. You know, let's go ahead and do that, and then then, then vice versa. So parental unity. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so you know, uh, like Jay's parents, they they get along real well. Right, right. Um, and it would be a lie to say that Jay and I, you know, there there's no uh, you know differing ideas. We always are on the same page. No, I mean we we definitely butt heads sometimes on uh, you know what we think is the right thing for a particular part of the score. But that's like Jay said, it's it's a good thing that that conflict is um, is what contributes to the creative process. And in the end, um, it it. The, the end product is, is better for it. Absolutely. I mean, if, 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 if your idea is never tested and never challenged, then you don't really know how strong of an, of an idea it is. Yeah. You know, so, so if an idea is strong enough to make it through the cauldron of collaboration, then we know that it's worth it. Good question.